Uh, hi everyone, I'm Russell Stewart and from uh, Stanford and today I'm presenting some joint work with Misha Andreluka and Andrew Ng on what we call end-to-end -end detection. And the idea is pretty simple, you're just going to take an input image and use a deep network to directly output a distinct set of object detections. And the process you can avoid typical post-processing steps such as a maximum suppression. Oh, okay, there we go. So if we compare, we have uh, something like faster RCNN here. And in this process, we're going to take our image and use a CNN to create this sort of high level of encoding. From that, we're going to create an overcomplete set of hypotheses. And those are going to be uh, reduced down via a sort of non maximum suppression and post processing pipeline. But that post-processing is something that doesn't really happen during training time. And so it's especially vulnerable to errors. And we see sort of both false positives and false negatives in this system. And critically, we look at this and at least we don't really see anything wrong with the encoder. That seems to make perfect sense. But the decoder portion uh, has room for improvement. And so what we're suggesting here is a system that uses the same encoding system to create a high-level representation of the image. But when you want to actually go to predict uh, detections, what you're going to have is a sequential process. So you're going to predict the first box and then the second box and so on. And at some point you're going to be done, you're going to stop. And because we have this sort of recurrent process, uh, we can avoid creating two boxes on top of the same object. And we can actually train the whole thing jointly end to end. And the post-processing you know, doesn't necessarily only get applied at test time. We have the, the same process happening during training. And so the critical question is, you know, how do we train it? What's the loss function? We have a loss function that needs to operate over sets. And so here um, we, we basically have two correct boxes and four predictions. And the critical question is which two are correct and which two are incorrect. And uh, answering that question, we're, we're going to sort of have the matching function that tells us uh, which ones are good. It's pretty intuitive. Once we know which two are the correct, we can increase their confidence, decrease the confidence of the others, and then fine tune the regression. But um, how, how, do you, how do you define a good matching function? And that's sort of the critical part to make it work well. And so we look at three different options. The first is you're always going to be forced to predict left to right, top to bottom, and uh, in terms of your object detections. And uh, the problem with this is that ultimately, uh, sometimes you have good detections that are penalized. And so you might say and said, all right, well, I'm only going to take the detections in the middle column. You know, I'm going to take the ones that are closest to the ground truth, and then I'm going to reinforce those. But that also has some problems because we've now lost any notion of order. We really want a network that outputs, here's the first correct proposal, here's the second, and now I'm done. And it doesn't take order to an account at all. And so we sort of introduce a new loss function that does both of those. It takes both order and proximity into account. And so let's just see some results here. Uh, so we're having the raw output of faster RCN in the leftmost column. And you can see it's kind of, it's all over the place. We have a very overcomplete set of hypotheses that we need to merge down. And in the middle column, uh, we see what happens after the merging, and, and the red arrow there in the middle column shows that sometimes you have really two objects, but you only get one detection. And so uh, with our method, we're able to sort of sequentially output those and avoid uh, some of those errors. So if you're interested in seeing how to potentially remove some of the post-processing from your object detection pipeline, I encourage you to come by and talk to us at the poster.